exactly who they're playing on, and that's a bit of a dilemma for uh, for the Clarence players. Winter, in fact, as I see it now, has come back to play on Spearman. There's the man that kicked the goal, like Kremis Gotham. Bit of a blue one in the uh, 10 yard square as well as back to the footy in the middle. We see Heard getting it out of the centre. Proctor can't mark. Adams, Winter. Well, Winter, the backman, cut, getting onto his left boot. Has a shot for goal from about 50 metres. Unlucky. Not happy either. He really just ducked his head, said a couple of words we can't say over the screen, and said, I wish that was a goal. Is that what he said, Rob? Yeah, I wouldn't want to repeat it. <laughs> So it'll be Dodds who's kicking in today. Playing on Richards. What a moment for the young full forward for Clarence. Proctor should have taken that. But Thorne, where good rovers should be at the bottom of the pack. Or oh, they're running out of the centre beautifully. Kremis go then to half forward. Strickland gets away from Fry. Centering kick in towards full forwards. Connell back, back there and save the day. Very important, I think, Dave, that uh, Clarence don't panic here. They've, uh, North, as we, uh, well, hope they do, is... Uh, Certainly put into the test in the tactical department early. Fry going out wide, bad kick. Johnston takes the mark. I think the simple instruction, sorry, well, the simple instruction would simply be get a man and go with him until we can sort it out. Yeah, and I think they're just making too many moves at the moment, and I think, uh, you know, they've gone a little bit defensive. Bombs one into the 10 yard square, off the table goes Simpson. Through for the minor score, and uh, North Launceston have done all the running already. Three goals, two. One no. wonders, they. Clarence have had, uh, what, one game in the last three weeks, whereas North Launceston have been playing week in, week out, and they had a terrific last quarter, so they're certainly on heat at the moment. Kick out to centre wing, Holdsworth can't mark. We'll see a throw in. Yeah, I think it's very important that Clarence just concentrate. As Davo said, get a man. I see Stephen Wright's taking himself off the ball to a forward pocket to give way to your run. And obviously, I think they need a lift around the middle of the field because blokes like uh, Loon, Todman and these sort of blokes have been terrific for North Launceston. There's Todman there, gets it towards Simpson. Well tackled, though, Dean under pressure. Good work from Thorne. Loon shapes and gets the free kick. Tell you what the matchup I don't like, boys, is Fry on Strickland. Strickland's too quick. Loon in towards full forward. There's Fry, thumps it away from Strickland. Ritchie, beautifully tackled by Thorne. Aldenoff to Ahern. Can the big Ruckman kick one? Bombs away in towards the pocket. Gibson! Great use of the body. It's one of his strengths, but he's got a difficult shot from there. Probably the hardest spot at North Hobart Able to have a shot for goal. Uh, see it on replay. I'm not certain he held it long enough. Play on for mine. Well, they've kicked three. Three, two to one, two. This is an important kick. If he can kick this, can give the Robins a real chance in this game. Goes for the banana. He's missed it. He's missed everything. It's a very mobile forward line they've got up there, though. Players like those two, Gibson and Strickland. Interchange of Lynch and uh, Derek Smith, I think it is. In the back pocket. You can see the ball just coming back now to... Looks like Duncan Heard down there. He's gone, on, he's gone for a run on the ball. He swapped with Stevie Wright. Davies is in the back pocket, picked up uh, Wright. So they're not worried about tagging uh, Stevie Wright, which is a bit of a surprise, Shorey. I would have thought they would have let Wadey go and actually tag Wright because of his performance in the second semi-final. Heard long out to the forward flank. Loon again. He's been a fine player in the final series, carrying on that good form. Fry leaves it for McCallum. McCallum's got plenty of time. Just stands, delivers, Holdsworth's there, but what a terrific right. mark from Ahern. Just wide of centre, kicks across to Johnston. Johnston takes the diving mark. Well, Johnston with the tee, as Rob Walters keeps reminding us, Dave, but he's doing pretty well, isn't he? Yeah. Malcolm Bug, uh, young Buck, not Malcolm Bug. Damien Bug has got the job on Johnston, and he was, in fact, flying for the mark uh, 50 metres away from where Johnston was. Here he is on screen now, unattended, no one within 30 metres of him. Johnston with the T, Waters with Noel. <laughs> Very difficult to get them all, isn't it? Tongue twisters here in the box. Have a look and see whether this kick is going to twist through. It's not. Twists to the left. A pretty important shot for goal Word of from Johnston there. You know, really, he was a bit within his kicking range. There's very little, if any, wind here. Certainly, it's going from right to left as he, as he dragged it across, but that should have been nailed. It should be 4 2 now rather than 3 2 3 3. So Clarence had the better of the first quarter, but since then it's been all the Robins. 3-3 three, three to 1-2, Richie at half back. Open forward line for the Ruse now, and Adams is the target. He won't quite get there. Proctor in defence today. Off to Simpson. 
There's a nest of them out here. Todman's got it. They're everywhere, aren't they? Marcus Todman from the half back flank to half forward. Ahern or Reese Jones. Cooney grabbed by Reese Jones. Wade ducks the head, tackled by Johnston. And it's a Clarence free kick going back to Scott Wade. If Richie had picked it up, the advantage would have been paid, but he stopped. So Scotty Wade, the 33 year old, last played in the grand final in 1980, or a premiership team anyway. It's done by Proctor in towards the middle. Olds, nice hand pass out wide to Steen Kremerskoven. Kremer in towards the pocket, looking for Gibson. Backing back is Strickland, got in Gibson's way. Home off the ground. McCallum. And they should relieve his Blair Brownless. Does it easily, Brownless. Just squeezed it in before uh, going over the line on the full, or did it? It did. Gee, we'll go with... Oh, we've talked about this much maligned uh, North Lancers and Ford line, but they're lively. They've got, you've got the mobile uh, of Strickland and also the, the strength of Gibson in the goal square. So they're looking pretty hot at the moment. 21 playing eight, the Robins in the lead. Holdsworth to Hurd. Been one of their biggest kick winners uh, so far in this game. Goes onto his left boot. Lucky to get away with that. Spearman in the way. Jones, good young player for the Roos. Not a good left foot kick, though. He was under plenty of pressure. Probably put himself under that pressure. And the kick went straight over the line, out of bounds. It's a fantastic effort by Tottenham there to back across Richards. Spearman. Oh, Ahern, a good mark. He's lifted. He is playing a fine first quarter of footy. Over the, the mark went, penalty, will he? over the mark went Scotty Wade. That's what the 50 metres was for. And Ahern's been a fairly quiet player in the final series, hasn't he? But uh, really, he's pulling out all stops today. He lowered his colours, I thought, in the second semi-final. Young Dean uh, certainly had it all over him, but he's taken two fine marks. If he can get his act together in uh, boundary throw-ins and centre bounce stuff, he'll be a valuable player for them. So Ahern in towards half forward. North consistent mark for Gee, North Launceston doing all the right things. Their confidence will be high. And I just wonder, is it that grand final experience? They haven't won one, but a lot of them have played in a couple. Rowan Thorne from 50, directly in front. Beautiful kick. It's a goal. North Launceston have started beautifully. Four goals, 327. Clarence, one to eight. And the Robins by 21 points. And really, the reason they are so far in front at this early stage of the game is because they're winning the ball across the midfield area. The Clarence players just haven't had enough people running through the centre of the ground carrying the football. And there's a little bit of confusion in that back line for Clarence. They're not really playing as tight as we've seen them in the past. There have been a number of changes which have uh, unsettled the structure of their side. And they are really in real trouble now. They at least need to score two goals before the quarter time, time siren. Richie again doing the hard work. Comes out to Cooney. Handball not good. Kremerskaven has been busy. Jones. Proctor's in front. Davies looks for the boundary line and finds it. He's been a good finals player. Been a terrific player coming off that back line. We saw him kick a goal last week and, uh, and he's certainly done the job on some quality forwards. Adams to do the ruck work. Ahern, who's gained about two feet in his leap today, gets the tap. Todman. Across to Hawkins. Hawkins now to the uh, centre of the ground. All the Robins at ground level. Reese Jones. Now it's Wade. Can he pick it up? Good tackling then from Johnston. And Johnston, really, you can take your hats off to him. He had Scotty Wade in his sights. Chased him from about 20 metres away. And that's why the Robins have got the ball. Graham Old's about to kick it. Just shy of centre. And goes out towards the half forward line. Roney. Kremisko that will come back to Roney. High kick. Still be in the field of play. Oh, well, well done, Blair Brownless. Mark. They're tough ones, those ones. It was a very high kick. And Johnston just had to wait and Brownless over the top. Brownless up towards the centre of the ground. Looks for Adams. Another free kick going north, Launceston's way. Who's there, Rob? Scotty went too early, put the hands in the middle of the back, paid the penalty. So we'll go to Hawkins on centre wing, kicks in towards half forward. Brownless, or slip through his fingers. Thorne's pace might win out here, he's already kicked one. Will this be number five? Well, it wasn't far away. Did get good purchase on the kick. 
and another behind the north one system a bit more luck they could have been further in front well they're playing at the top of their footy they've, they've done everything right tactically they've been terrific Clarence has started off a little bit negatively but there's a lot of improvement in the Clarence side because Wade and Wright haven't got into the game yet Fry big kick out to the half back line travel about 65 meters Loon kicks mother Richie doing the hard stuff again kicks across center looking for winter chance now for the ruse that's Scott back to McCallum over to Dean Dean was looking for Wade Johnston in the way he's been fine in the first quarter of footy handballs to Kremerskoken chips in short to the running spin and he ran from center half back to get into the action he marks he kicks well to Ahern mark number four to big Adam Ahern tell you what we'll go with a player of AFL experience like Paul Holdsworth he has given Kremerskoten an absolute acre and he's got to take some responsibility as a player with that experience he's been disgraceful early the Hearn from 55 goes towards the goals big pack down there who's brought it down and that's a Timmy Alderman well here he is he's brought back from the wilderness or been brought back from the wilderness after 10 weeks and that's what they brought him back for the big mark well, he was sensational earlier in the year with his marking across half forward and uh, his catch it on, just stood his ground and basically jumped with both feet into the air and uh, was very surprised that no one was coming over the top with a big fist to punch it clear. Holdenoff stands from about 10 to 15 metres and delivers a goal. The Robins on fire. Yes, and one would expect that just about every uh, Robin on that forward line would be around Timmy Holdenoff because it's been a huge risk by them to bring him back after so long out of footy. We, we recognise his marking prowess across that half forward line. But the guy has a tremendous spirit too, and that's probably one of the reasons why they would have selected him today. Well, what a start. Clarence, the hot favourites. And they've got a lot of work in front of them now. Dean out of the middle to centre half forward. Winter in the forward line today. Traps it pretty well. Uses his pace. All oh, the big boos go up. Someone doesn't like Darren Winter. And he's getting a free kick. I mean, this man really puts his mind to it. He can play some very exciting football. He's quick, he's got good skills, and uh, we know his uh, reputation as far as being a tough man. If he settles down and plays some footy, he could be a bonus forward for them. OK, Darren Winter. From about 60 metres, in towards full forward. Richards in front. He couldn't take it. Oh, great hands. Great hands. North Launceston at ground level doing very, very well. As is this man, Adam Ahern. Oh, it does well, O'Hearn. Looking for support. Johnston arrives. Well done, big fellow. Nothing on offers Johnston, so he does the next best thing and heads for the boundary. Rob, you've called it right. I think the Clarence players are being killed around the ball. They just haven't got any running players getting anywhere near the action and picking up the possessions that the forwards are relying on coming their way. Yeah, Dean caught one from O'Hearn. He's got the free kick as well. O'Hearn went for the footy. Well, that's the second one O'Hearn's given away. He got Richie very early in the game, and uh, now he's popped up. Darren Winters gone up to a Hearn and uh, well, introduced himself. Yeah, it was a grand final, Rob. You know, it was a pretty solid clash there. And uh, if no one went in for Clarence there, I'd be very, very disappointed. 50% more possessions for North Launceston. Winters in there just uh, well, letting him know that he's about. The kick down to the forward line. Richard's hands on it, can't bring it down. Stevie Wright, ground level. So two Dodds. Well, not much happen there got to be a ball up gee if young uh, dean does go down if he's not too good after that clash then clarence are going to be in real trouble because they're going to be robbing peter to pay paul to get another big man onto the ball well they're bringing him off too so he's coming off the ground as dean and cullen's coming on let's hope the young fella's pretty right because he really, really is a vital cog in the rue lineup johnston looks for the boundary line again and finds it well, they don't want to be too hard on the young fella because he might be seriously hurt with some sort of facial injury. But, uh, gee, I'd be uh, pushing him out there. It's a grand final, and he's been terrific so far. And you've just got to stand up in that sort of circumstance. Winter thumps it towards half forward. Spearman goes the other way. Johnston regathers. He's been tremendous. Over the top. Goes over like a 10 pin. And we'll have a bounce at half forward. There's no doubt he's got an ice pack on, on the right side of his cheek. Uh, John Kinney, looking after Clarence today, he might be able to get to the box and find out and give us a report. I'm sure JK, the grand old man of the ABC, will be able to do that. John Kenny just going to investigate now. Clarence need a goal. Bug in towards half forward. Spearman will get back here first, and I think he'll go for the line. Winter goes for Spearman. 
nothing much in that. Won't worry Todd too much, I'll tell you now. He's a pretty tough boy. We'll go down to John Kenny in a minute with an update on young Dean.